Hello learners, welcome to NIS studio. Myself Dr. Neelam Tyagi, Assistant Professor, Campus Law Center, Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. Today I am going to discuss lesson number 15, which is derived from your senior secondary course that is concerning the introduction to law. So today we will be discussing alternative dispute resolution mechanism. So let us start the discussion about part one of these mechanisms. Now before we proceed with the discussion about why there is a need for alternative dispute resolution mechanism, it is important for us to know that what are the weakness of the present judicial system because of which we looked for the alternative remedies. All of us are very well aware that there are these various problems which are inherent in the formal litigation process. It is extremely expensive, it provides delayed justice, one has to wait for years before the justice is delivered. The process is absolutely formal, it is lengthy and expensive. We are also not certain with the outcome of the case. Uh, usually appeal is preferred after the finalization of the dispute and there is a lot of delay in the implementation of the decision. All these weaknesses, they reduce the faith of the common people in the judicial system and all this led to the search for alternative remedies. Now if we discuss these alternative remedies, they are now preferred as they provide cheap and speedy justice as compared to the formal present judicial system. Now let us discuss that what are these ADR mechanism. But before we proceed with what are these ADR mechanism, we have to understand the various salient feature of these ADR mechanism. First and the most important of ingredient of ADR mechanism is that they are the participative method that is the parties directly participate in the entire process. These processes are non-adversarial process. Almost every kind of civil dispute can be resolved through these ADR mechanism but it's only very few variety of criminal cases that can be amenable to ADR mechanism that is not all kind of criminal cases are fit for reference to ADR mechanism. The second salient feature of these ADR mechanism is that these processes allow parties to resolve their dispute out of the court in a private forum with the assistance of a qualified neutral intermediary of their choice. That is we need not to go to the court, uh, we need not to hire a lawyer, uh, we need not to present our case in front of the judge. So it is a private kind of a you know forum where people participate in the discussion and there is this third neutral person who is going to assist the parties to resolve the dispute and the dispute will be according to the wish and choice of the parties. Uh, the third uh, salient feature of the ADR mechanism is that unlike adversarial litigation, the ADR produces the procedures are often collaborative. That is the parties collaborate with each other, they try to understand each other's position and then the outcome which is derived is with the common consent of the parties. So what I mean to say is that ADR allows creative solution which probably will not be possible or the court may not be able to offer if we are going for the adversarial process of dispute resolution. Thus, you know, after this small discussion, we are clear that uh, the ADR process do not involve litigation, but they resolve dispute. The process is extremely confidential, it is less formal as compared to the formal litigation system and it is less stressful than the traditional court proceedings. Also the parties cooperate, collaborate with each other and they come out with a creative resolution of the dispute which probably will not be possible in a formal courtroom setting. The parties develop a better understanding of each other's position because they collaborate uh, throughout the entire process. and. Also, every kind of dispute which can be filed in the court as a civil dispute can be effectively resolved through these ADR procedures. So disputes concerning consumer complaint, family dispute, business disputes, etc. can be uh, effectively resolved through these ADR procedures. This brings us to understand the various advantage of ADR mechanism. So, uh, there are these various advantage which the procedure offers in terms of it being first of all less costly as compared to the court procedure. That is one need not to pay the court fee, the lawyers fees etc. You need not to pay anything you know in terms of traveling expenses because you know in a very short duration of time your case will be resolved by these procedures. Also in case you know the ADR mechanism is court annexed that is court referred and the resolution is arrived. For example, you know the court refer your dispute for mediation and there the resolve get you know amicably resolved 
by collaborative efforts of party then the court fee which you paid in the beginning you know when you began the entire proceeding it is refunded after the settlement the second advantage of adr is that it improves relation between the parties that is you know because the parties are collaborating they are trying to understand each other's position it is not going to harm the relationship in the longer run and also it is not going to cause any kind of uh, emotional stress dispute etc in the future because everything is amicably resolved in the first go itself the third advantage of adr is that it improves communication between the parties again you know i'll repeat myself that the parties are working together they are resolving their dispute through common consent so uh, there is a lot of collaboration which is happening at every stage of the process so there's improvement in the communication uh, which is probably not possible if we are going for a formal resolution of the dispute through court mechanism the fourth advantage of adr process is that it is less time consuming it means what i mean to say about it being less time consuming is that the matters can be settled in few meetings by common consent of the parties we need not to go for a formal court hearing every time which may linger on for say years and years the fifth uh, advantage of adr process is it is absolutely consensual in nature that is the parties work together to solve the dispute without letting the relation getting bitter and also the outcome of the uh, of this consensual method or the outcome which will be generated by the common consent of the party will be more acceptable to the parties the sixth advantage of adr process is it is that it is an absolutely flexible process that is the parties have an absolute control and freedom to choose the applicable law the date and place of meeting the process the language they have an absolute when the appointment of the third neutral person is concerned and they have free choice to decide that what fee will be payable to the third neutral person all right so let us now proceed to the various technique of adr uh, their process and their advantage to the people so as you can see there are these various main techniques of adr which are utilized for the resolution of the dispute uh, we have arbitration conciliation mediation we have something called trial conciliation or mediation we have negotiation or discussion we have medab medola and mini trial so these are some of the major main technique of adr procedure let us discuss each of these uh, adr techniques one by one so first we'll discuss the concept of arbitration now what is arbitration it is a process in which uh, you know please remember that in all these adr techniques there will be always a third neutral person who will be presiding over the dispute and there will be different uh, you know name which will be given to these uh, third neutral person depending on the role which they are going to play during the process so the first uh, a process is that of arbitration now in this process as i told you a third neutral person who is now known as the arbitrator he hears the arguments and evidence from each side and then decide the outcome of the dispute that is the arbitrator is going to hear the arguments and evidence from both the sides and then he is the one who will be deciding the outcome of the dispute now if you compare the process of arbitration to the formal litigation system the arbitration is less formal than a trial and the rules of evidence are often relaxed but before we go in for any kind of uh, resolution of dispute by arbitration there are few important things which need to exist in the background first of all there should be a valid written arbitration agreement which must exist prior to the dispute that is that there should be some kind of a pre writing which should exist between the parties and this pre writing is known as the arbitration agreement which can be a separate contract or it can be a part of you know it can be a clause in a contract secondly as i told you there is this third neutral person who is known as the arbitrator he is appointed either by the parties or by the court and he is an expert on the dispute which is you know referred for the arbitration process thirdly the decision which is pronounced after the process is known as award it is binding on the parties and it is enforced by the court as i told you the award is binding so no appeal can lie against this award in any 
court except on certain grounds which are mentioned in section 34 of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act. If you talk about the proceedings, they are absolutely private in nature, they are less expensive, they provide faster resolution and they are flexible process. Every kind of a dispute concerning trade, rent, partition of properties, consumer dispute is uh, fit for reference to arbitration except the criminal, matrimonial and insolvency matters which cannot be referred for arbitration. So, the every type of dispute concerning trade, rent, partition of properties, consumer disputes are fit for reference for arbitration except the criminal matrimonial insolvency matters. The second process is conciliation. Again, there is a third neutral person who is known as the conciliator. He is helping the parties resolve the dispute by lowering the tension, improving communication, interpreting the issues, encouraging parties to explore potential solution and assist the parties in finding a mutually acceptable outcome. You have to keep in mind that the conciliator may even propose a settlement and this is uh, the salient feature of the conciliation process. The conciliator, he may be appointed by the parties, but he does not take any decision. He is free to express his opinion about the merits of the dispute and he can, after you know, hearing everything and expressing his opinion, may propose a settlement. As far as the proceedings are concerned, they are absolutely confidential, voluntary in nature. The parties have full control over the process and the outcome of the dispute and it is a process of amicable resolution of the dispute. The third ADR process is mediation. Now, in this process, mediator or third neutral impartial person, he will help the parties to reach a mutually acceptable negotiated resolution of the dispute. The mediator will assist the parties to reach an agreement, but he will not express his opinion on the merits of the dispute. He will break any kind of a deadlock which may exist between the parties and he will encourage the parties to reach an amicable settlement, but he will not determine the dispute between the parties and he does not have any authority to make the decision. As far as the proceedings are concerned, they are absolutely voluntary, confidential in nature and the parties control the outcome. A variety of disputes such as commercial, legal, workplace, community and family matters are fit for reference for mediation. The next process of ADR is uh, negotiation. In this process, uh, there is no impartial third party who is required to assist the parties in the negotiation. And what is happening that the parties are free to work together to come to a compromise. The parties, if they wish to, may choose to be represented by their attorney during the negotiation procedure. And if the negotiation succeed, the parties can sign this settlement agreement in terms of the agreed terms and condition and then it will be binding on both the parties. The proceedings are absolutely voluntary in nature. It is more like a dialogue between the parties which is intended to resolve the disputes. And what is happening that during the process, the parties, they bargain with each other for individual or collective advantage. The next uh, ADR technique is pre-trial mediation. Uh, as the name itself suggests, the pre-trial uh, mediation is an alternative for settling the dispute, that is settlement of dispute by the courts before the initiation of the proceedings before it. So, this is a very good mechanism which is introduced in section 89 of the Code of Civil Procedure, Code of 1908. This code governs the procedure for hearing and disposing of every variety of civil suit. Now, this section was added by the Amendment Act of 2002 and, you know, it is inserted especially for the dispute concerning the family which can be resolved without getting into the bitterness of the litigation. Let us now discuss the various hybrid procedures for dispute resolution. Again, these are the various ADR techniques which are uh, kind of using one a combination of two varieties of ADR techniques. So, we have MEDOLA, we have expert determination, early neutral evaluation, mini trial, MEDOB, neutral listeners, agreement, rent a judge, final offer, arbitration and such other procedures. Now, let us discuss our uh, three most important types of uh, the hybrid ADR procedures. First, we have MEDOB. Uh, so, it is a combination of mediation and arbitration. So, this form of ADR is one in which the arbitrator start as a mediator in the beginning, but if the mediation fails, the arbitrator will impose a binding decision. MEDAB is a mixture of mediation and arbitration that pulls from the benefits of the two. The second hybrid procedure of ADR is MEDOLA. In this, if the parties fail to reach an agreement through mediation, a neutral person who may be the original mediator on an arbitrator will select between the final negotiated offer of parties. His decision is binding on the disputing parties. 
Third, we have mini trial. In mini trial, which is different from the official trial of suit, the disputed parties elect an independent person. They present their contention, arguments and evidence. And after hearing, the elected independent person produce a conclusion to which the parties agree. I hope you are clear with these hybrid procedures. So finally, let us discuss the importance of ADR in India. There are these four important points because of which the ADR are gaining importance in India and are uh, you know, now established as a way of resolution of dispute. First, we all have discussed that the court procedure have various inherent problems in them. There are a lot of delays. The procedure is lengthy, it's expensive, technical. Litigants are poor and illiterate and they cannot afford the system. The entire atmosphere is quite intimidating. The proceedings are non-confidential in nature and they are adversarial in nature. So, which prompted us to look for the alternative dispute resolution mechanism. Secondly, you know, every kind of petty case can be resolved through this ADR mechanism which will relieve the court of the heavy burden, dependencies will be reduced and the court can now devote time to decide more heinous cases and deal with criminals who are a threat to society. Thirdly, it saves wastage of time and money of the court because due to heavy pendencies, the expenses of the court go up that are met by the government from the taxes which are paid by the citizen. Lastly, these ADR mechanism, they provide quick resolution that are tailored to parties' interest and needs. So, I hope you are clear with all the concepts that we discussed today. Thank you.